Welcome to Haltech Elite NSP Training Part 11. In this training tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at setting up a flex fuel sensor within our NSP software. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. So what we're going to do here is move from our fuel tab over here into our main tab. From here, let's jump into our navigation tree and we're going to make sure we're on our sensors option here. The sensors option is going to bring up our screen that we're finding right here. We're going to move into our engine sensor option and we're going to go down here under either flex fuel composition slash temperature or flex fuel composition. Now depending on the specific sensor you're working with, one of these options is going to be more relevant. If you're dealing with a Haltech flex fuel sensor, which is a continental type of sensor, they're going to have both a flex composition or ethanol content reading out of the sensor and they'll also have fuel temperature. I'm going to assume you're running a Haltech flex sensor, so we're going to cover that option right here. If you have a Haltech flex sensor and you don't care about registering the temperature properly and you just care about just the uh, ethanol reading, the flex fuel composition, you can simply select this option. I'm going to just show this option right here. Now we can find that there's going to be a asterisk, a red asterisk, because we haven't assigned our details. Let's do that real quick. So I'm going to scroll down here under our flex fuel composition sensor. And then the first thing we're going to have to do here is assign the input we've wired our flex fuel sensor into. In this case, I've wired the signal wire from my flex fuel sensor it goes right into my SPI2 or sync pulse input 2. Let's go take a look at this real quick. So I'm going to go to assign and we're going to find that that's going to be an available resource right here. So we can see that pin B9, sync pulse 2. And we're seeing here that if we're taking a look at the activity, it's going between 5 and 0.05 volts. We see it's fluctuating there because I have a signal output for my sensor already and we're seeing that uh, that's going to be the option we would choose. If you're unsure, obviously you can take a look here. We see there's movement or activity on this specific input relative because our flex fuel sensor is wired in there. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that real quick and click OK. Now in here, it's automatically going to be populating it to my sync pulse input too. We see that right there, sync pulse input 2. And our details here are some things we need to go and configure. Our edge selection, we have our options here between falling and rising. Now, the flex fuel sensor can actually work between either falling or rising. You can choose either. When you're dealing with this temperature option, if you have your edge selected incorrectly, your temperature relative to your sensor you're dealing with won't be output correctly. It'll actually be incorrect on that fuel temperature. So, if you're unsure of which edge to select, start off with falling and then take a look at your fuel temperature. If it doesn't seem right, you can select your edge here and switch it from falling to rising or rising to falling. But on the Haltech sensor here, I'm going to go ahead and choose falling. Sensor type is going to be Hall Effect, so it's a square wave pulse signal. We don't want to go and choose our option here for reluctant or custom. The pull-up should be enabled, and then we'll find the, the frequency time constant, which is going to be acting as a filter, should be set at one millisecond. Now, if we go here and reboot the device, give this a second, what we're going to notice here is that we see our pulse coming in, showing us that 0.05 to 5 volt pulse. And notice here that we're seeing this frequency, 60 hertz. This is going to be relative to the scaling for this sensor. So if we take a look here and move down into our flex fuel composition, this is going to be the, uh, the translation between the frequency to the ethanol content. If we look here, we're going to find that the default scale for all the continental sensors, or actually all the flex fuel sensors, uh, that's going to be the sensor itself, 50 hertz, 0% ethanol. 150 hertz, 100% ethanol. So it's a linear scale. Anywhere it falls in line between that, it'll just interpolate relative between the frequency and the ethanol content. So we can get an ethanol reading. It's really, really straightforward. So if we go here back into our display, what we're going to find is that 60 hertz should be, relative to that scale, about 9 or 10% ethanol, the equivalent. And that's actually correct because my particular vehicle here is running just pump 93 from the, uh, the gas station, and we do have 10% blended ethanol fuel here. We do not have petrol or ethanol-free pure petrol fuel, so we're going to see that this is going to show sh some type of a reading. You should be see between 8 to 10% if you're on petrol fuel. Uh, United States, most gas stations aren't going to be ethanol-free on the fuel. If you're an ethanol-free gas station, pure petrol, you'll find that this should read, uh, in this case, 50 hertz. So if we go back here under flex fuel composition, we're finding that this scaling is going to be correct. 
If we go down here, a couple other details, sampling thresholds. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.